Welcome to this free GNS3 practice lab for the CCNA. That's right, in this video, as well as the next one, I will be using GNS3, not Packet Tracer. As much as I love Packet Tracer, even today it doesn't support everything that is on the CCNA exam topics. So for this video on multi-link PPP, and the next video on PPPoE, I had to choose between skipping the topics or using GNS3 instead. I will still put the lab file in the description, which you can use to load up the topology. These routers are Cisco C7200 routers. However, I can't legally include the iOS image files, so you'll have to get those yourself. I'll put the name of the iOS image I used in the description. If you want to know how to get GNS3 working, do a quick search on Google. There are plenty of people who can teach you how to get GNS3 up and running. Now, if you just can't get GNS3 working, make sure you watch the video and learn the commands as these topics are on the exam topics list. Let's get started. In this lab, we will configure multi-link PPP or MLPPP. Much like ether channel, which we configured a few labs ago, MLPPP groups multiple physical interfaces together to operate as one logical interface. This provides multiple benefits. You get the redundancy of having multiple links, so if one link fails, the others can keep forwarding traffic. However, you also get the increased bandwidth of having multiple links forwarding at the same time. So, in this lab we will configure multi-link PPP with PAP authentication between R1 and SPR1, and CHAP authentication between R2 and SPR2. I'll go on R1 first. Conf T. Now, SPR1 is currently configured for MLPPP with PAP authentication, and is trying to authenticate with the username packet and password tracer. So let's configure that user account on R1. Username packet, password tracer. Okay, now to configure MLPPP, let's first create the logical interface, which is called multi-link. Interface multi-link one. Okay, there are a few commands we need to put here. The first is PPP multi-link. That is followed by PPP multi-link group one. We will put that command on the physical interfaces too later to tell them to join this multi-link group. Keep in mind, this multi-link group number and the multi-link interface number have to be the same as on the neighboring router. Next, let's activate PAP authentication. PPP authentication PAP. The network diagram says to send a username of Cisco and password of CCNA. PPP PAP sent username Cisco, password CCNA. Finally, we have to configure the IP address here, not on the physical interfaces. IP address 100.0.0.2.255.255.255.252. Okay, so that's all for the logical interface. Let's confirm. Do show run interface Multi-link 1. The order is different, but there's everything I configured. IP address, PAP authentication, and PPP multi-link configuration. Okay, now let's configure the two physical interfaces to join this multi-link group. Interface S10. There are just three commands I need here. We have to set the encapsulation on the physical interfaces to PPP. So, encapsulation PPP. Next, tell it to join the multi-link group we created. PPP multi-link group one. Finally, make sure the physical interfaces aren't shut down. No shutdown. Okay, now I'll do the same on S11. Interface S11. Encapsulation PPP. PPP multi-link group one. 
no shutdown. End. Okay, let's do some show commands to verify. First, a general PPP show command. Show PPP all. Notice our two physical interfaces, as well as the multi-link interface, all with the same peer address of 100.0.0.1, which is the address of SPR1. Also, the peer name of packet, which SPR1 is using to authenticate. Next, show PPP multi-link. There's the remote username of packet again, and our local username of Cisco. Down here, you can see our two member links, serial 10 and 11. Okay, let's try a ping to see if it works. Ping 100.0.0.1. There we go. Okay, let's move on to R2. The multi-link configuration will be the same, just with CHAP authentication instead of PAP. Conf T. First, I'll create the user account that SPR2 will use to authenticate. Remember, the username should be the same as the remote router's hostname. So, username SPR2, and then the password should be the same on both routers. In this case, password CCNA. Interface multilink1, PPP multilink, PPP multilink group 1, PPP authentication chap, and finally the IP address. IP address 200.0.0.2.255.255.255.252. Okay, that's all. Let's check the configuration. Do show run interface multilink 1. There's the IP address, followed by CHAP authentication, and our multi-link configuration. Looks good. Next, we just have to prepare the physical interfaces. Interface S10. Encapsulation PPP. PPP multi-link, group 1. No shutdown. Interface S11. Encapsulation PPP. PPP multi-link, group 1, no shutdown. End. Okay, let's confirm. Show PPP all. Again, our physical interfaces, as well as the multi-link interface, all have the same peer address, 200.0.0.1, and that peer's name is SPR2. Show PPP multi-link. The remote username of SPR2 again, our local username of R2, and down here the two member links, serial 10 and 11. Let's try to ping SPR2. Ping 200.0.0.1. Okay, no problems here. Now let's configure static default routes on our routers so that they can reach each other via the service provider network. Here on R2 first. Conf T, IP route 0.0.0.0, 0 .0, .0, .0 and the next hop is 200.0.0.1. Do show IP route. There's our default route to 0.0.0.0 slash O. Next, let's configure it on R1. Conf T, IP route 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, the next hop is 100.0.0.1. Do show IP route. There's the default route. Let's try a ping to R2 from R1. Do ping 200.0.0.2. Great. Looks like our multi-link PPP configuration is working. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, 
let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.